Hi. Today, we're gonna talk about books. Finally, I missed talking about books, okay? But we are back. We're back and we're talking about books. And today, specifically, we're gonna talk about best books of 2023. 22. 22. So I'm just gonna go into it. There's no point in bullshit. Let's just start. Okay, so I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10? That's a mistake. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's supposed to be 12. Why do I have 10 books in front of me? Okay, let's start. I'm gonna figure that out later, like everything that I do with my life. So I have 12 books and I put them in an order. So we're gonna start with my least favorite to my favorite ones. But still, they're like 12 of my favorite ones. So it's not important that the 12th one is the last one because it's still one of my favorite books of the last year. So the 12th book, my 12th favorite book of this year, do we really have 12? Yes. It's the cat who saved the books. It was very cute, very fast, very sweet, but also very smart read about, well, the cat who saved books. I liked many quotes. I have many, many cute things. Well, basically the green one are dialogues and the pink one are just quotes that I found really interesting. Oh, for example, this one. Reading isn't only for pleasure or entertainment. Sometimes you need to examine the same lines deeply, read the same sentences over again. Your field of vision expands. It's like finding a great view at the end of a long climbing trial. It's so beautiful. Like, it's basically a book about books. It follows the story of a boy who's being visited by this magical cat and out of the blue he tells him, dude, you need to help me save books because there are some bad people who's been hurting them and you need to help me. So they go on a few quests to save those books. And it's very smart because it talks about important things in a very simple way and I loved it. It was very cute and fast and important read. Then we have a book that I didn't really... Well, I loved it, but I didn't think it would be here. It's Wild Beauty. It follows a story of this woman that holds a magical powers. I read it in April, but the memory of it is like I read it a few years ago. Doesn't mean that I should reread it. So basically, it's a book that follows a story of a few women that has this magical power over nature and over their land. They are sort of connected to their land and they also are in herd because of this cruel curse that they need to bear on their shoulders, which is that every man that they will love will disappear. So basically, they sort of cannot love anyone. And we follow, I think, the story of five girls, but essentially it's a story of two people because we have our main character and then we have this uh, mysterious boy that appears out of nowhere onto their land. And they sort of, the girls take them as his own because he does not remember his past and they take care of him and they just become family or whatever. It was very cute and beautiful and magical. I loved this because it was so magical and connected to nature. Each girl has each gift connected to nature. One can make flowers grow, the other one can do something else also connected to nature. And it was a beautiful romantic story too. I don't read a lot of romances, but maybe I should start because it was absolutely beautiful and touching. I love the idea of family, of the generations. Romance was, was very good too, but also the relationship between you and your siblings, your parents, grandparents. It was very interesting right here. Like I could see that the family was the main topic right here and it was all approached through nature and through magic and I loved it very much. Then we go and we have Pan's Labyrinth. It was a magical, very spooky, creepy, but beautiful and smart read about this girl that moves into the house with her mom and new husband of hers, which is basically psycho. And the girl is on a quest to find a magical door to this fantasy realm and it was great. It was so good. We saw the story through the eyes of the little girl, but essentially this is also a story of war, of death. It was very violent and very, very brutal, but because of the fact that we saw that through girl's eyes, somehow it remained peaceful and magical, but so brutal. And it was so beautiful. The ending was gorgeous and I have not seen the movie yet. I'm planning on but I loved it. It had completely different idea of fantasy and fairies that I used to have. And I really liked this approach. 
There we go. Damn, we have The Silence of the Girls. It was so good. I read it when I was on my Greek phase. I read so many Greek retellings, that's crazy. And I'm very happy that this one got to be on my favorites because it was so good. It was very intense. This is a Greek retelling about the Troy War and we see the war from the perspective of the women of Troy. So we don't really follow the heroes, we follow the women. So how they have been treated and how brutal life them was back then. And I know it's a little retelling. I know they're not real events happening right here, but still it is gonna get to war and it had a really big impact on me with women and with the idea of being owns possession. It was really good. It was very good. Gave me a lot of thinking. It was great, but different book was better. <laughs> and it was actually about a hero because it is Song of Achilles. I'm sorry, I became this basic girl who read Song of Achilles and absolutely loved it. Well, yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I read it. I picked it up thinking I'm gonna like it because I knew I love Greek retellings but I definitely was not hoping that I'm gonna cry and that I'm gonna be so deeply involved with this book. I did all reading vlog on this book so you can check it out if you want to. <laughs> but it was so deeply moving. I loved everything in this book. I love the relationship between the characters, I love the plot, I love how gentle but at the same time brutal the book was and it was just deeply touching, you know? Maybe I didn't like learn a lot about life or like it didn't give me many new thoughts but I was so drawn by the story that I had to put it on my list. So there we go. And then I think it's seven. On seventh place we have Bone which is a graphic novel comic series. I couldn't pick one book, so I'm just putting Bone as a series right here because, you know, comics are short, you read them very, very quickly. So I just basically put Bone as a whole. It was so good, okay? Bone is like a core for every good fantasy adventure story, for me at least, because everything was good there. We have amazing characters, a great plot, we have very good fight between good and evil, the dialogues are funny, everything is captivating. Like. Whatever you want, whatever you need, it's there. It is brutal, but it can be gentle, it can be funny, it can be sad, it can be touching, it can be hilarious, it can be everything, honestly. And the drawings are very simple, I mean, that's a very OG style of comics, but I loved it. I loved it. I've been talking about Bone in my previous video, so I don't want to repeat myself, but it was great. The next one is The Four Agreements. Oh man, what I got out of this book is crazy. Almost every page I underlined so many things right here, like so many things, but like the main goal are those four agreements that we have to follow. Okay, from the beginning. So this is a non-fiction book about these four really important agreements that you have to follow in your life due to be happy, due to live happily, due to live with awareness, to stay positive, to stay calm, to stay far away from the negativity. I should reread that though because I've been feeling a lot of negative energy because of other people lately. Not many, only few. So we have four agreements. We have be impeccable with reward. Say only what you mean. Yeah, so we have the first one. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Yeah, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Don't do that. <laughs> we have second one. Don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality their own dream. Dude, I have to reread that. We have three. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness and drama. Amen. And we have four. Always do your best. Your best is going to change from the moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best. It's so good, it's so smart, it's so simple, but it's actually so smart. It's like your best is gonna be different when you're sick and when you're healthy. Your best is gonna be different when you're gonna be with your family or when you're gonna be alone at home. You know, it's just, it's just so good. I, yo, I'm literally going to read this soon because I need to, we need to, this is a very good book if you are too sensitive and you being kind of 
surrounded by negativity and people who can imply something on you and I've been having that lately with those few people who don't really accept me as me and it's been hard for me because it's like someone has the idea about you and they then they treat you not kind you know you didn't do anything and you want to stay yourself but it's hard not to care you know why am I getting sad I should not care about this I think I'm gonna read this, it was such a good book I think it's gonna help me with like dealing with people who don't accept me and who treat me bad <laughs> Then we have The Prophet Oh, oh So it was a book about a prophet who is leaving his country and this book is a compound of like short thoughts of his about life In this book he speaks about love, he speaks about religion, he speaks about uh, money, he speaks about poverty he basically covers every topic in human's life and he says what's right, what's wrong. You read it as a non-fiction, but I think it is a fiction because we actually follow a story of the prophet, but it's written like you've been reading a non-fiction. So it was extremely smart and mind-opening. This one I feel like also rereading soon because it was also very helpful to me in the last year. Then we have the book that I finished in December and we have The Alchemist. My sister gave it to me. Yo, girl, thank you so much because it was so freaking good. So essentially, it's a story of a man who leaves his home and goes on a journey to find his personal legend. In Personal Legend, after reading this book, I became so obsessed with the idea of personal legend. Personal legend is basically, well, essentially, is it is the goal of your life. It's the sound in your heart that tells you what it needs to be done. It's like following your purpose. Your personal legend basically is your purpose. It's like I could write all speech about personal legend because after this book I became so interested in that idea. But we followed this and him dealing with that. And it was beautiful because it also opened my mind at what is that I really want and how should I follow my heart. And it was absolutely beautiful. It was so smart. Please read it if you're dealing with personal issues. <laughs> if you're dealing with personal issues, literally read those three books because they're gonna heal you, okay? They're gonna give you another universe. Next one. Oh my god, we have the last three. We have the last three, that's crazy. Okay, on the third place, I put The Pearl by John Steinbeck. It was amazing. So the book follows a story of a man who finds the pearl of the pearls. He finds the treasure of the universe. And this book is a very interesting approach to the idea of wealth and poverty and craveness and wanting to to own and it was very brutal but it was so beautiful it talked about it also talked about fear and grief and violence and about what you can do if you crave wealth it was so smart and i loved it and it also made me think a lot that's number two and on a second place we have mermaid moon it's a thick book. It was a very thick book, but it was so good. It was a story about a woman, a mermaid, who leaves her home under the water and goes above it to this village in search of her mother, whom been a human. It sounds like a very simple plot of a fantasy book, but I'm telling you, it's something else. It's something else, and I'm angry that book is not being recognized, because it was amazing. Not only we follow interesting story and fantasy story, but we also see the difference between the lives above the water and under the water, and we see how a it was interesting to see through the eyes of not human, to see things that humans do. The difference of politics, the difference of speaking, the idea of their religion was so amazing and abstract right here because these people in this village, they would do anything for the god and our heroine simply cannot understand what the god is. It was so interesting to see the idea of love and religion and the difference between mindsets in this book. And apart from that, we follow a very interesting story. We have the romance here 
here there is some sort of a romance here but it's not very important i think this idea of femininity and the search of motherhood and in general women is so important here and i loved it and i really want people to read this i want more people to read this because it was very good that's why it's my second favorite read <laughs> my first favorite book of 2022 is wild dancing I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it was such a beautiful and magical fairy tale. It is a retelling of 12 dancing princesses and I've never read anything like this before. I've read fantasy books, I've read classics, I've read myths, but this was so magical. I was captured by the beauty of it, by the mystery of it, by the fairy folk. I really liked everything right here. I loved the plot, I loved how the characters were perceived, I loved that our main heroine was interesting to follow because sometimes it can be an issue to follow interesting heroine. And here we have, here we follow five sisters and their journeys into the fairy world. So what says on the back is five adventurous sisters four dark creatures, three magical gifts, two forbidden lovers, one enchanted rock. Cross the threshold into the wildwood and enter a land of magic, daring, betrayal and true love. And honestly, it might sound like a simple fantasy book, but for me it was so magical and I could see so many connections to myth, legends, folklore, fairy tales that I was bewitched. I am a sucker for fairy tales. I wrote my BA thesis about folklore and fairy tales and myths and legends. So I was stunned by this book. I was amazed by it. Right after finishing this one, I bought the second one, which is... Uh, okay, so it's not a series. The book that I bought is basically a story of one of her other sisters. So it's like Furious Later, so they're not connected. And also I haven't read it yet. But immediately when I finished it, I remember it was in the middle of the night. I finished it, I cried because it was so good, and immediately I bought the book. It was really beautiful. The love right here, the idea of love and friendship right here. Mm. Not only from the perspective of our heroine, but also from the other sisters. Like, everything is important here. I loved everything that was in this book. Everything. Oh my goodness, I've been recording for 30 minutes. I hope I'm gonna be able to edit that so it's gonna be 15 minute max. Hi, so basically my camera died. I'm just here to tell you goodbye. Thank you for watching. I don't know what was the last thing that I've said, but I think I've said anything that I wanted to say. So thank you. I just wanted to properly, properly say goodbye to you. So thank you. Thank you. And you can tell me what was your favorite book of 2023, because I would love to know. Okay, ciao. Bye.